Hi guys, uh, welcome back to On The Spot STEM. And as you all know, we have the AP exams coming up soon and the AP Computer Science exam is going to be in a couple of Fridays. And so in in that in sense, in that inspiration, today we're going to be tackling all of the four free response questions from last year's, last year 2018 AP CompSci A, the released FRQs on the College Board website. And we'll go one at a time. And I know this is going to be a long video because there's four questions and there's going to be detailed explanations for each question. So I'll include uh, timestamps in the description below if you want, for specific problems if you want to skip around. And for these questions, I'm going to assume that you've already read them beforehand. Otherwise, it's going to take a long time to just, you know, read every question again and again. <laughs> okay, so with that, let's begin. The first question is about a frog jumping in a frog simulation. And so part A pretty much asks us to write the simulation method. And so basically what the simulation method, the goal of this is we're going to have to return a Boolean, which is true or false, as indicated by the problem. And so there are three criteria we have to meet, obviously. The first criteria is that the frog has reached or passed its goal. And then the frog has reached a negative position. Or the frog has taken the maximum number of hops without reaching the goal. And so here's what we need to like quickly understand. Uh, the way this method is described as defined in the constructor, we're reading in two different variables. The first is the distance, and then followed by that is like the total number of hops it's going to take. And so the only time I'm going to, this simulation is going to return true is if and only if I get my goal distance, which is going to be this first number right here. If I get that distance, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, if it ever hits negative, we're returning false instantly, as indicated by the second position. And we're going to return false if we don't get the goal distance within the maximum number of hops here. But then if we pass or reach our goal by then, we can just return true. And so that's all we need to know for this method. Here, I'll have a position method, or I'll just say index, like the index of where the where the frog is currently located. We'll add these numbers as we go along. And then so we'll run a basic for loop. I is less than, in this case, we want to make it less than the maximum number of hops we have, which is max hops. And then so pretty much at each jump, I want to add the distance that I get to my current index. So index plus equals, and then the method that we uh, have for that is called hop distance. And surprisingly, and not surprisingly, we have to use this in this problem to get the full credit, which happens a lot of times in these questions. So at this point, I'm going to add the hop distance. And so these are where I need to have my two if conditions. The first if condition I'm going to have is if hop distance is ever negative, which means it's less than zero, then I want to return false right away because that violates our second condition. But then I also want to say that if hop distance is ever greater than or equal to, oh, sorry, uh, say this should be position because we're changing position every time. So if the position is ever, we ever, it's ever greater than or equal to our goal distance, and we're going to return true because this implies that we've that within our number of hop opportunities we have, we've passed the distance that we need to succeed. And then so at the very end, I'm going to have a return false. And what this is is this answers the third criteria, which is the it, I have an output. Uh, they have an output. The second one of these uh, the third criteria, which is that if I've taken the maximum number of hops without reaching my goal distance, then that's it. The frog just stops jumping and the code's done. And so that implies that if the frog has to jump every time, that means that it either never reached its goal distance or it went into the negatives. And so in this case, uh, majority of the times, this means that we're, we haven't met our goal distance, which is why we're going to return false. So that's all I have to do for part A. And then for part B is run simulation. For part B is that we want to run a certain number of simulations, which is indicated by the parameter here in sum. Oh, this is num, sorry, num, the parameter here. And then we're going to output the proportion of the successful attempts that we have. So pretty much the proportion is just going to be how many successful divided by the total. And the total is going to be num. And so all we have to do is it's just one for loop. And here's the logic behind this for loop. It's that pretty much I'm going to run a set number of simulations. The parameter in the problem they give you, for example, right here is 400, which means in this for loop, if I do 0 to 400 in this for loop, this will run 400 times, which is what we want to do because we'd want to run 400 simulations. So now, actually, before that, let's define a variable outside, a count. We'll call it, this is going to be the successful number of counts that we have in all of our simulations. And then in this case, we'll say that if simulate, if simulate is true, 
but you can just indicate if you just write that remember that if we don't need to say equals equals true we can just say this we can just leave it like this if this is true they want to increase the count by one which means for every time the returns true every good simulation i have i want to increase the number of successful counts i have and at the very end you may be tempted to just write this divide return count divided by num the only problem with this statement is that count is an integer and num is an integer however i want to be returning a double and so the way i do that is remember casting i cast it like that and that's how it returned the double. And so this is pretty much problem number one. And yeah, we killed it pretty easily, to be honest. Now let's move on to question number two. Question number two seems a little bit more intimidating at first with all these um, array lists and word, and then like just all, because array lists in general can be a little daunting. We know how that goes, it can be pretty daunting. And so the first part is actually asking us to just write a constructor to the word pair list class. And what they're going to do for this is they're going to be reading in an array, a string array to be specific. And so we, there's something we have to note with this constructor. The way this constructor works, it's let's look at this. It goes one, two, it, it reads in one, two, and three. But then the way it pairs is it goes one, two, one, three, Two, three. Now, if you want to think of it, visualize it this way, it starts off with one, and then it goes on to two, and then it goes on to three. And then once it does all the possibilities one can, then it moves on to the next one, which is two, and the only possibility is three. And I think this is highlighted even better by example number two. I first fix on the the, and after the, I have the words more, the, and merrier. And notice how it falls in that order, the more, the the, the merrier. So it fixes on this first index, and then it moves on to the rest of the indexes. But once there's no more, it then moves on to the word more as indicated right here. And then it goes the merrier, more the, more merrier. And once there's no more for that, it moves on to the, and it just finishes with merrier. So at that point, we can see that it's kind of like a nice double for loop shift and a double for loop fix. And this is how you'd want to see it. But first, remember that one of my private instance variables is an array list. And so I want to bring that up in the constructor and make sure I declare it properly. So I will say all pairs equals new array list. And I want to say the type. The type is word pair type, word pair. And so then I want to start reading in words properly. So for int i equals 0, i is less than, I want to say words uh sorry uh all pairs dot size minus one uh, no wait sorry <laughs> words dot size minus one words dot length minus one and then i plus plus and then so this point I, the reason i do minus one is because when i use my first the outer index i don't want to go all the way to the very end because then there's nothing to the right that i'm going to compare it with so i do minus one and then the next one is going to say i plus one because when I have like let's say I was starting off with more I don't want to start off with j equals zero and go backwards from the I want to start off from the words that are to the right side of that words dot length j plus plus so then at this point all we want to do is just simply read this as a pair and so we can actually do that quite uh, easily through the um, we can do it honestly through the public word pair uh, constructor that we have right here. So we can say word pair temp, like the temporary word pair, equals new um, equals new word pair. Yeah, I don't know why I did lowercase. It should be capitalized over here. Word pair temp equals new word pair. And then at that point, I would just say words, words dot, words i, and then words j. So it takes these two string objects. As we see, it reads two string parameters here. In this case, words i is going to return a string, and words j is going to return a string. So here, have a word pair, and all we want to do at this point is just add this to our array list that we have. So all pairs dot add temp, and yeah, that's pretty much part A. So just to go over how we did that real quick, so that it makes sense, is that we first start off by just initializing the all pairs and declaring it in the scope as a word pair, and then we have two for loops. The first is to serve as like an the first on the outside serves as the outer pair, which is like we're starting from the leftmost and just working our way in. And then every one, the second for loop just goes through every element to the right of this num of the string here that we're comparing it with. And then it just pretty, and then this line right here, the word pair temp equals new word pair. What this does is this takes the word pair. Uh, I make a temporary data type called word pair, and then pretty much I'm setting this equal to words i and words j, which as we see is like these 
two consecutive or just like any two of these word strings and then I'm just setting that equal to temporary and I'm adding a temporary to the array list as what this problem pretty much asks for. So now to move on to part two. Part two is pretty much finding the number of matches we have. And in all honesty, I truly believe that this part is a lot easier than part one, at least. Because because for this problem, we don't even have to like recode the constructor. We can just assume that the array list is perfectly defined and that the all pairs are perfectly defined. So all we have to do is just run a for loop to go through every single one of the elements inside of this array list. All pairs dot size i plus plus. And then at that point, we want to look for how many of these are the same. And so luckily, we have a get first and a get second method. And to our advantage, we know that in the string class, we also have the dot equals method to see if two strings are equal. So I want to return, this is going to return an integer. And the integer is going to return is the number of similar pairs. So outside, as always, I want to have a count variable. And then we'll say over here, if all pairs dot get i dot get first dot equals all pairs dot get i dot get second and note that this get i is very important because we can't directly just do all pairs dot get first because it's not going to know which index in the entire array list we're even referring to to get to the first. The get i is very important because it says, hey array list, I want you to go to the zeroth index. And inside that zeroth index, then I'm able to call the get first because in that because in every index, note that I have two of these strings. But the get first can only be called if I tell it tell the array list which index it needs to go to. So now I'll just say it go to and i would say say run this boolean statement, right? If the if I go to the first like the ith index and I get in the first index I get do I do get first and that string is equal to the second string, then at that point I'm going to want to increase the count by one. And this is going this for loop here is going to ensure that it runs through all the possibilities. And at the very end I just want to return the count because that's all it's asking, how many of them are similar? And this count increases every time there's a similar pair as indicated by that line. So that's how you would do number two.